SaaS applications make provisioning new services very easy for IT operations. But what's not so easy is troubleshooting performance problems considering that we don't own or manage the SaaS provider's network or the public internet. Kentix network observability platform can monitor SaaS providers such as Office 365, Salesforce, GitHub, Dropbox, ServiceNow, and many more. Really, if it's on the internet, we can monitor it. Now, we use primarily a synthetic testing mechanism to continually interact with a particular SaaS provider and capture all sorts of metrics like packet loss, jitter latency, DNS resolution, page load time, and other metrics that you can customize for a specific use case. So let's take a look at just one example of how you can use Kentic to investigate a poorly performing SaaS application. We're starting in the state of the internet, which is a service that we provide all of our customers as a built-in function of the platform. And what we've done is deployed test agents around the world in strategic locations to gather performance metrics of many of the, of the most popular SaaS providers and services out there. So here at the top, we get the HTTP status code, the response size, domain lookup time, connection time, response time, HTTP latency, network latency, jitter, and packet loss. Now, Kentic does the same thing with the major cloud providers, such as AWS and Azure, as you can see here, and also for public DNS services, looking at connectivity, but also tracking resolution times. So as an example, let's say that we have complaints coming in from end users, specifically in our upstate New York branch office, that Microsoft 365 is very slow for them to log in and sometimes the login page fails altogether. So what we could do is create our own custom tests to monitor Microsoft 365 specifically for that region. So let's switch over to our Synthetics Test Control Center. I've set up a collection of synthetic tests to monitor the connection and performance of the SaaS applications that are important to the folks in my upstate New York branch office, specifically my Albany location in this case. I've also set up tests to monitor several on-prem devices like the gateway, the office router, and an on-prem wireless controller. Now for this scenario, we've received trouble tickets that our end users weren't able to log into Microsoft 365 earlier in the day for about an hour or so. And uh, sometimes the login was slow and it would fail, and sometimes the login page itself would fail before users could even get a chance to log in in the first place. So let's try to figure out what's going on. I'm going to start by filtering my tests for Microsoft 365. And I want to start by looking at my login simulation test. This is a synthetic transaction monitor that uses a built-in script to interact with an application, and it captures metrics like the overall transaction time and also of all the individual components. Now for this scenario, I'm using it to log into Microsoft 365 and then track how long it takes to go through the process and then get all my apps like PowerPoint and, and Word and so on. Now I'm gonna expand my time range to six hours so we can look at earlier in the day. And indeed, indicated by all the red that we can see here, that for an hour or so, the test was failing continually. Also notice that before and after that one hour, the test was succeeding. And uh, we can see that, of course, by the color green that we see in the, in the health status bar, and then also the pass message here under transaction completion. And uh, when the test passes, look at the total transaction time. It's around seven to eight seconds, which the system has dynamically established over time as the normal time it takes for the script to successfully complete. But I wanna focus on when we were experiencing those issues. And you can see that the total transaction time, it spikes to over 20 seconds, which we know is causing the test to fail. And we can see that by looking at the indicator here that says transaction timeout. So that indicates that something is slowing everything down, causing a timeout of the actual script. And that's exactly what our end users were reporting. So what I wanna do now is take a look at the page load test because I wanna figure out why the page wasn't loading at all sometimes. So we'll open up that test and notice that when things are working fine, we get a 200 status code, so that's good. The navigation time, domain lookup time are fine. Our average HTTP latency is about a second and a half, which is normal. And our average latency, which represents the, uh, the connection time, so network centric latency, is around 15 or 16 milliseconds. Everything looks good here. And then when we look at that one hour period, starting around 1040, it looks like, our navigation time and our domain lookup time, they're still okay, suggesting that this may not be a DNS problem. But over here to the right, notice that our HTTP latency, it shot way up. But also very interesting to me, 
our average latency, which remember is network related, et shot up as well, suggesting that there is possibly a network issue at play here, a network latency issue that's causing HTTP latency, and then of course everything to slow down to the point of failure sometimes. Now, if we wanna look at the individual components of the page load, we can choose a time slice, and then for the agent, we can select details. In the upper left, we can select waterfall, and then we can scroll through the files and the elements involved with that page load. Now I can see that there's no one file or one element that's really the smoking gun, but I do see that many files are taking a very long time, several seconds to queue and then ultimately send. So something is definitely slowing down the actual transmission of data, and uh, it doesn't seem to be any one particular corrupt file or maybe a, a DNS problem. So since we're looking at network latency, I'm gonna start by looking at our, our local network resource to see if there's anything causing or reporting latency for our locally connected devices. So we're gonna take a look at our gateway device first and it's reporting no problems at all during that time. Notice it's we're all green. So let's take a look at our office router as well. And uh, again, the office router is reporting no latency among its lo local connections either. We're all green here. So what we can do is expand our search to, uh, to the network out to Microsoft 365, so looking at the public network, and we can do that using our connection monitor test. So looking back at that one hour earlier in the day, so we can see here that right away, there was a very clear and dramatic increase to network latency during that time which went away at the same time our end users reported the login problem went away. So uh, there's certainly some sort of network latency happening at the exact same time that our end users reported they weren't able to log in. So that's good, but I wanna know where that's happening. So what we can do is look at the path view, and that's generated using traceroute, specifically Paris traceroute. And if we look at that time period, we can open that up, and we can see here indicated in red, indicating a problem, that our, uh, our uplink, or rather our upstream provider is experiencing some sort of latency. So it's not our locally connected devices, and it's not necessarily all the way on Microsoft's end, but there's something happening in the path, and here we can see that it's, it's a, uh, one of our upstream providers. So by using the Kentic platform, we were able to investigate a slow SaaS application from both a global perspective, using the state of the internet, and also from a regional perspective, with custom performance monitoring for one of our regional branch offices. To learn more about Kentic and how we can help you monitor your SaaS applications, visit kentic.com/dem or reach out to your local Kentic representative as well.